What is going on YouTube? We're working on another custom today and today I'm working on an older casting. I'll be working on this Chevy Monte Carlo Stalker. Check this out. I actually picked this up off of eBay along with this one and I think the plan is to give this one a more modern NASCAR look and eventually restore this one to its former glory but uh, I'll do a video when I do that one but this time let's focus on this one it has definitely been well played with and uh, has seen better days but hopefully I can fix it up and make it look like new and uh, maybe it'll see some track time somewhere this car actually debuted in 1975 in the flying color series and it was designed by none other than Larry Wood. The original casting had red line wheels, and in 1976 it was re-released as the Lowdown. Now there are several different variations of the Lowdown, but there are only two variations of the Chevy Stalker. In uh, 1977 they brought it back, still with the yellow paint job and the black wall wheels. So. I think this one is actually from 1977. In 1979, they released another one that was in the Speedway Special Series, but it was blue with green decals. So I'm thinking this one is from 77, which makes this about 43 years old. So kind of cool. Little Survivor, but uh, hopefully we'll make it better. Let's take a look at this. It looks like the posts are pretty well worn away uh, the chrome base on here is kind of turned clear but uh, maybe we can fix that all up but first things first let's get this drilled out and take it apart so i got the post drilled out didn't take much, but when you're working on these older cars, you got to be very careful with these plastic bases because as time goes on, they can get very brittle. And once you break that, it's going to be really hard to fix it or replace it. But uh, let's take this thing apart and see what we got. Oh, yeah, check that out. Actually, looks pretty good inside, although there is a uh, this car's seen some water at some point. Axles are kind of rusted. But uh, overall, not too bad. Check that out. The one seat and the little, I don't even know what that is. It's supposed to be a hood scoop. Something. I don't know. Interesting. And the glass could use a bit of work, but... Uh, We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. It looks like uh, this is just paint damage here. It doesn't look like the metal is pitted or gouged or anything like that. But uh, once we get that paint off there, we'll uh, have a better look at it and see if we need to touch it up a little bit. But anyway, let's go get the paint off this and see what we got. As usual, I'm using Citrus Strip Stripping Gel to remove the paint. And I don't imagine that this stuff should have a hard time getting the paint off here. The paint color for this is Lemon Yellow, which is just normal yellow paint, which is kind of cool. Uh, when I do the restoration on the other one, it shouldn't be too hard to find a paint that'll match. Sometimes that's the biggest problem, especially when uh, trying to match Spectraflame paint. But uh, I know the Redline Shop has some of the Spectraflame paints in stock that you can use if you know how to airbrush. They come in really, really handy. And maybe I'll go through the Redline Shop to uh, get the yellow paint for the other one when I do the restoration on it but uh, this stripping gel just get it all over I like getting on the inside of the car and the outside 
and make sure you spread a good amount all over and then just give it time to sink in there I usually forget to get these bottom quarter panels in usually when I take the paint off there's paint stuck in there because I don't do a good job of getting the citrus strip in there so there you go just let that sit for a little while probably about Oh, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes, and it should strip all the paint. Here's something to know about uh, the stripping gel, though. Don't use it on plastic-bodied cars. It got the result I thought it would, but I just wanted to try it out and see, uh, see what it would do. And it did that. So, now you know. Sometimes you just got to try things out and see what happens. So, anyways... Once the citrus strip sinks in and starts removing that paint, we'll be back and uh, see what this casting is all about. And just like that, it looks like this paint is ready to come off. That didn't take long at all. Check that out. I'm not really even putting any pressure on there. It's just coming right off. I think it took about five to eight minutes and it's always good practice to wear gloves when you work with any paint stripper but don't let that stuff stay on the gloves too long because it will eat right through them very quickly so check that out this thing's kind of cool it's got some pretty cool body lines on there I'm not sure what paint scheme i'm going to go with yet but I want to do a color that's going to kind of highlight these body lines. So maybe a lighter color. Not sure. But we will see. And that paint is just coming right off. Check that out. Alright. Looks like it's time to go wash this under the sink. Go over it with a... Uh, I have a plastic brush, but I also have a brass brush that I will go over it with and uh, get all that paint off there. All right, so after going over it with the 400 grit and the 1000 grit and the rubbing compound, I think it's ready to go. So I didn't take it to a mirror finish. I didn't need it. I'm gonna be using paint and primer, but uh, if you were gonna use a spectrophilane paint and paint right on the metal, you would want to get it a heck of a lot better than this uh, because the Spectraflame paint is kind of transparent and it'll pick up the shine from underneath and that's what makes it uh, have that fantastic look that it has. So, but for what I'm doing, this will be just fine. The primer and all that stuff will take care of everything. So let's go get some primer on this and figure out what color we're going to use. For my primer, I like to use Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer Metallic Aluminum. Stuff works really good, and best of all, it covers in a very thin coat. For my color, I decided to go with Duplicolor Metal Cast Red. I've used these Duplicolor paints quite a bit, and I am a huge fan of them. This is, in my opinion, Spectra Flame in a can. But uh, if you're going to use these paints, I would go exactly by the directions and you have to use a lot of thin coats to finally build up the color otherwise this paint can be prone to runs and uh, building up in places so if you're going to use this stuff it's fantastic but uh, definitely go by the directions and if you're going to use clear coat after your final coat wait 10 minutes and then put the clear coat on if you wait longer than that your clear coat is going to have a reaction with the paint and it's not going to come out right for the base, I went over it with Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer Metallic Aluminum. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. And I think it's going to go fantastic with the paint job. Alright, everything's put back together. So, let's see how it turned out. Oh yeah, check that out. Very, very cool. I would say that this Monte Carlo just got a new lease on life and i got those monoblock wheels on there 
really happy with the way this turned out. I love this Duplicolor metal cast paint. We used it several times and uh, turns out really well. I went with the white rimmed wheels. I thought it would uh, match the paint job and I think it turned out really nice. I'm really happy with this build and very cool taking something that was old and beat up and uh, making it brand new again. So I even went over the base with uh, the chrome paint and it looks really, really nice. Really happy with the way this turned out. Let's go take a closer look. I picked the decals for this car up off of eBay from RWNE FF1. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know I use his decals quite a bit. I've always been very impressed with them. And uh, if you get a chance, go check him out on eBay. He's got a whole lot of decals. And uh, I guarantee you will not be disappointed. This paint scheme is based off of Bill Elliott's 1992 Budweiser car. And uh, being that this casting is supposed to depict an older NASCAR that may have ran in the 70s or 80s, I thought these decals worked perfectly and would be something you'd find on one of those cars back in the day. So, And, quite honestly, the decals just worked really well with the casting, and I was very, very happy with how they turned out. This casting is based off of the second generation of Chevy Monte Carlo, which was built from 1973 to 1977. Now, the cars built in the 70s don't have the greatest of reputations, but these second generation Monte Carlos were pretty freaking sweet. You could get any engine you wanted in them from a 305 to a 454. Based on the grill of this casting, I would say it more resembles the 1974 Chevy Monte Carlo. And it just so happens that that is the same time that Hot Wheels secured the licensing for this. So I think it's a pretty safe bet that uh, this is more designed off of the 74 Monte Carlo than uh, any others. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a fun time making it and I really had a good time working on this casting. And it was really fun bringing uh, something that was old and pretty much discarded back to life and uh, making it look brand new again. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And we will see you on the next one.